everyone, welcome to another exciting video. I am Tyken, and today I'm going to be showing you a brand new series where I update the Garudoku Texture Pack, as well as make little updates and changes as I go along to show you kind of the whole process, how much time and effort this takes, as well as showing off my technique a little bit. Now, I'm no texture artist. Uh, I am learning, I've been learning since I've started all this. But uh, the real heavy lifters in this texture pack right now are doing most of the hard work. We have Bloody Toast, we have Barry Tyrannosaurus, we have Kenny. We, we have got a lot of really good artists right now. And what I mostly do is I kind of cobble everything together, almost like a manager position where I take all the credit and they do all the work. Uh, however, I do do a few things around here. I've done most of the models so far, and I've done a, a couple of the mechanical things. Um, I'm also, I also tweak all of the textures, like some things look really good, I modify them until they look the best they can. Um, so I'm more of the OCD element. Um, so this, this is the master texture file, by the way, that I'm currently zooming around on. Uh, these are all the textures that have been contributed over the years to the Garuduku, uh pack. Granted, I have no idea if all of these textures are, uh, what's the word, okay to use? Because I know a lot of these have been donated from other packs by not the original artists, and some have been rescinded. Uh, we took out a lot of Dusty Crafts and a bunch of other textures, uh, but it's, it's always really hard to know because is back in the wild west of texture packs when this first started where people didn't really care about sharing that kind of thing and I understand you definitely want to get credit for your art but not a lot of things were documented so if you see something on here that belongs to another texture pack let me know and i will remove it but i i, I tried to cobble everything together uh in this case literally because the cobble's right there uh everything that everything into one sheet and kind of separated and organized and it's a little bit bigger than it needs to be but that's just for the room to grow so anyway what i'm going to be working on today is specifically a door so i i already kind of started before i realized you know what this this would make some good effort so i will i will show you what i'm doing so we'll just go ahead and select this door so what i want to do is make an entirely new texture for the new warped doors and uh what's the other one crimson doors um we don't have those yet so what i i want to do since i can't make a new texture i'm going to be editing textures as much as i can and that's pretty much how i've updated the texture pack on my own this entire time as well as a lot of contributions and help in general uh, so these are all the doors that i've i've managed to to find um i don't recall who did all the doors i think i think all the ones with the circles on them barry did i I could be wrong. Like I said, I'm not very good at keeping track of things. I'm basically a programmer because of how badly I keep track of things. Um, but so, so the first thing uh, is I take this door. I believe, I'm not sure if this door already had the knocker removed or if I removed the knocker, but I didn't like the knocker. So I, I, I also like the frame of this one better. So what I did here, here, let me, let me show you in comparison. So you can see what I've done already. Uh, first thing I've done is kind of remove the tops and the bottoms, or at least push them down a bit. Uh, because I, I feel... Um, I actually have mixed feelings about that. Because it feels like just a big panel right now, and less like a door. But we'll we'll get to that and see, see what I think. Because, again, the whole process is me editing things and seeing what I like. Uh, I then removed the hinges, and all I, I, I pretty much did the lazy method where I just uh, essentially sampled the area around it, painted over it, and then kind of filled it in a little bit so it doesn't look like I, I literally just pasted over it. So, you know, you do something like this, put some uh, kind of noise in there, and then just kind of fill it in. And already it, it looks kind of like... Uh, Oops, at least in that specific area, like nothing's ever happened. So, uh, again, it doesn't look perfect, but unless you uh, sincerely get like a deep look there, it it's almost impossible to tell. So now I'm going to undo everything that I did, uh, get rid of this. And you can see now we're pretty much back to square one. That saved a few minutes, but 
So what I did here is I, I painstakingly uh, copied the entire border of this little pane. And this is this is the birch uh, door. I'm actually not sure which birch door I'm using in the texture pack currently, but this is this is the birch door that I've decided on. Uh, it's it's very beautiful because it's kind of have like an ornate pattern. I think it's supposed to be more like a paper um, panel, almost like a um, oriental style doors and everything, or it's supposed to be like a white glass pane. I think it's very beautiful either way. It has a lot of potential. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I I copied everything. Uh, the the edges and what I want to do uh oh did I actually copy them I did okay so so if you remove the black layer you can see that I I posted the correct layer on top um I'm I'm not gonna really do a tutorial on how to use Paint.net because I'm I'm using it honestly very very crudely because I don't know all the shortcuts or have any plugins or anything installed so this is this is just kind of me messing around. Um, showing you how I work. So first thing I want to do is darken this up because it's going to be the nether. Um, yeah, that's actually what I want to do, brightness and contrast. And you can see there, there's there's uh, shortcuts. I could just do that with a flick of a key, but you, you get the overall idea. And, and if, I, if I change something here, you can see what I'm using. I'm just not clicking the button specifically. So let's go ahead and brighten contrast. Um, So you see, that definitely gives some more definition, but then it kind of removes a lot of the, the texture. Like, it all just looks like the same black lines. There's no noise, per se. So we're going to darken that a little bit that way. Actually, I wonder... Yeah, just a little bit darker. You don't want it too dark. And again, we can mess with this as much as we want. I just want to get that out of the way. Now, what I want to do here... Um, here, actually... This might be a good idea. I don't know why I didn't do this earlier. I'm just going to use the magic brush to kind of... Uh, no, that's not helping. That's way too much sensitivity. So you can crank the sensitivity and it grabs more. But if there's any kind of stop gap like it is there, it um, doesn't grab that, which is sad, but understandable. Okay, so... I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these. And I am not doing a good job, apparently. So what I'm going to do is the whole reason that I'm doing this. It's really, it's actually really hard to, to, to focus and uh, speak at the same time because I'm trying to focus on what I need to do while uh, focusing on commentating because, you know, you don't want to just sit here in silence, obviously. But what I'm uh, essentially doing is I'm going to copy this paste it on the bottom layer, or honestly, I don't even need to paste it because once you have it selected like so, uh, you can just go down and now you're on the bottom thing with the same selection. So I delete it. So it's it's completely gone from the bottom layer. So if I if I make the top layer invisible, you see it's, it's just like that. Uh, that actually looks pretty awesome just like that, honestly. But we'll, we'll leave that for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take all this. I don't actually I don't really feel like that's necessary, honestly, but you know what? It doesn't matter. But now now you can see here individually there's a door, there's the lines in the door, there's that. And breaking that all apart just makes it a lot easier to edit everything that you want to do without having to get too much into it. Now let's see. Actually, an interesting thought occurred to me because there's two things we can do. First thing we can do is add some red to this because I want it to go red and black. That makes a lot of sense for crimson. Uh, we're going to have to bump up the saturation so we get the color we want. Um, it's really hard to tell because that's still really light. I feel like right about there. Okay. That's kind of pink for my taste, but already you can see like uh, black and red. It's the general idea of what we're going for. Now we can keep bumping up the saturation, but of course, eventually it starts to look gross like that. It's going to probably dial it back a bit. Um, it still looks pretty gross, honestly. 
So let's go ahead and bump down the contrast. Oof. Nope, contrast not helping. I know it might help. So levels is kind of like the whole contrast -y thing. I honestly don't know how this works. Because uh, I know you can control like the light and dark levels. And yeah, I, I honestly don't know how to use this. I just kind of mess around with it and hope for good results. But you can see that kind of slowly lowers everything. And vice versa. So let's see. That, that looks about good. But again, way too much saturation. So what we're going to try to do is lower the saturation again. And you can see already that I have so little idea of what I'm actually doing here. But hopefully that doesn't show too much. Okay, that looks kind of ugly. That really happens every time you try to um, add color to a really light texture. Or really light color. Um, let's see, what's something else I can do? Well, first of all, that looks kind of gross by itself. So let's try to mess with the levels of the border. Move that out of the way so we can see a little bit better. Oh, that looks pretty sick actually maybe yeah nice dark gray ooh oof yeah that that's definitely the contrast is what i'm messing with there ooh um too dark maybe just a tad no i don't like that setting let's about there now already that looks pretty cool very nethery like that actually looks like stained glass i think the whole reason it looked bad originally was because of the um the border of the the glass now that looks pretty awesome if you ask me i feel like because like huh. how do how do i explain this the whole nether thing you don't you don't want to go too dark and red i feel because then it just overpowers it like you want a nice soft red especially because it's supposed to be like a stained glass at least that's the feel that i'm going for i feel like that does that very nicely uh, i also want to fix that a little bit i don't want like really dark spots um maybe something dark but not like that dark because I feel like anything too stark draws the eye and not in a positive way. So I give a lot of dark specs, but now that's perfect. Nothing's really jumping out at you. Um, let's see. There we go. Nothing's too light, nothing too dark. You just kind of look at it and anything that, that sticks out too much. Uh, it's actually a really interesting trick, by the way. I'm sure you guys have seen the cup game where, like, you put something under the cup and you shuffle it around. Uh, the easiest way to do that game is to just kind of relax your eyes and not really focus on anything, but kind of just um, casually look at the scene above you or before you. Um, and that's how I used to win so many Mario Party games. Uh, and that's kind of the trick I'm using here. It's It's an eye trick. You just kind of relax your eyes and don't look at anything you just kind of glance at it and there are a few little spots but I don't think it's anything major nothing most people are gonna pay attention to or bother with oops too light mm, there we go that was a spot that was a spot nope uh, that was yeah and then here and here Perfect, or at least very close. Now, I kind of want to toy this a little bit more because it's it looks a little orange rather than red. Now, I like this, and I might go back. Ooh. Actually, just by default, that looked pretty good. I think, I think my problem is it's just a little too saturated. So let's bump it down. Let's adjust the color a bit. That's here. Let's reset it. That's, <laughs> it's it's really too red, or too too saturated. It's just, ooh. Good thing there's lots of undo buttons. So knock it down to 95. Um, 92. 
yeah, no, 90s, 90s a good fit. So let's let's move along the ranch because there's there's a lot of colors here. Not all of them look good, and you can kind of see that they they just kind of lose the contrast and everything. Like yellow actually looks really good, and that's actually beautiful for this door frame. Oh my god! Note to self: mess with that later. Another idea, by the way, is doing a stained glass door where I just um, do each panel individually, which would be really easy to do since this is already sectioned off, and make a, a colored um, stained glass like with different colors. That might look really good if done tastefully. Now we have a few options here, like we have a nice orange, um, but we're going crimson, so we can we probably like I I kind of want to go red and black. Um, although the door frame, I'm not sure if I want that to be more red or black, or maybe a blackish red. That might look good, too. So what we're going to do, I think, because that, yeah, that's all purpley now. So let's see, I think, I think crimson look good right about there. Oh, that was the color we started with, because it's at zero. <laughs> Um, maybe a few points over. There we go. Literally did very little, but it, it looks better. And we can always uh, bump up the brightness or contrast, but that looks really good. Subtle, nice, all the, all the good descriptors. So now we're going to go around the edges, select the door, but we're going to actually need to go onto the door level. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure. Oh, it's it's naturally very yellow tone. So let's go red. Okay, and already you can you can see the difference. Um, so that shifted everything more to the red. You can see some colors didn't quite shift, and I think that's just the nature of the color. So what we're gonna do is just kind of go over it manually. This door actually looks more pink than anything, but that's that's not that's not a bad thing. All right, let's see. Um, these spots look a little bad. Again, you just you just kind of eyeball this as best as you can. Oops. I keep trying to grab these. There we go. Some of this is really too pink, though. Let's be honest. Okay. So now, again, again, the cool part about the uh, selecting the layer is you can just throw your, your magic brush on high and select everything because you don't have to worry about selecting the other stuff. Okay, now, see that, I mean, that doesn't look bad, but that doesn't look good either. So let's go to levels. Ooh, little too much contrast, but I'm digging the color might actually have to do something different with the panes. Maybe a different color for the glass. That would might look really good. Um, so let's see. It's a little bit... That's a good color. And then can we lower the contrast? Ooh. That's... That looks good, but it looks too... Hmm. Burnt? I can't... Oh, okay, that's good. Um, yeah. You don't want it a bright red, because that just looks weird and out of place. So obviously, as we go, this starts to look more and more out of place, so we're going to obviously adjust it to make it look better. Let's... Ooh. Oof. Um, decrease the contrast just a little bit, so it's not like... You want smoother colors. And then a little bit darker. Actually, you know what? That looks really good as is. I don't really know how to go too much darker without messing things up. So now this is a really good because it's it's like a dark kind of a faded red. So it's not like a, a like a neon or pastel red where it just kind of like pops out at you because that's not what the nether's about. It's it's kind of dark and gloomy. And while you don't want things to blend too much, you do want them to feel natural in the habitat. Um, obviously, we have some references. I don't. I don't think I imported them over yet. But we have references for the other 
woods, like the nether and everything. Let's see if I got it over here. I don't think I do. These are these are all the textures that um, Bloody Toast has contributed so far, and you can see there's a there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, let's see. Um, hmm. So what we're gonna do here? We're gonna readjust this. So let's go ahead and hues and saturations. I think. I think it needs to be a little bit darker is the problem. Let's go to levels and see what we can do. Ooh, ooh, I kind of like that. Maybe not that dark, but okay, maybe maybe something similar. Um, that's, that's a really beautiful red. Oh, I wonder if I could get the door that color. But let's see. Um, maybe make it an orange red. This is already kind of orange ready make it maybe pop a little bit more with some uh some more saturation oh no saturation's just uh taken away you can bump it up by like a few points maybe and then lightness lightness just makes it look more washed out you can see that immediately like with just another point it just it just becomes more white so we don't oops we don't want to add any more hue, although, no, that's too orangey yellow. Ugh, that's horrible. Mm, 